Hey Gemini, it's Dana. Deep thoughts with Dana. I'm camera, right? We're going to do your reading face to face, okay? I've done it for the other signs that I've put out monthlies for and I'm going to do it for you guys, right? I've been running around shopping, doing errands and stuff because I'm going to the Telluride Film Festival tomorrow. So I've been just running around all crazy and um, I'm a little ragged looking, so I apologize. But nevertheless, I am inspired to read for you. So this is what we have. Oh, if you'd like a personal reading with me, you can reach me at deepthoughtswithdana.com. This is a general reading for the sign of Gemini. If you have Gemini anywhere in your chart, it may resonate with you. It may not. If it doesn't, walk away, leave it alone. Don't try to make somebody else's shoes fit your journey, okay? Don't do that. Um, this is not your reading. This is not your reading. You may see yourself in this reading. Maybe this reading hasn't started for you yet. Maybe you're in the middle. Maybe you're done with it. But nevertheless, it's not your reading, okay? Everybody's situation is different. So don't make a life-altering decision based on in anyone's general tarot card reading, okay? Okay, so deepthoughtswithdana.com if you want a reading with me. Here we go, Gemini. Check this out. So what we have here is the... Ace of Swords in reverse to the Ten of Wands. So this is some kind of chaos, right? Chaos, confusion. I want to say chaos because it's all followed up with the Three of Cups in reverse. This Three of Cups in reverse is one of two things. It's either a third party situation or it's a creative, it's blocking creation, creative block, or it's both blocking the creation of anything else in a situation because there is a third party situation. But nevertheless, this card is the complete opposite of celebration and reunion like its definition is. It's So whatever that means for you, Gemini, that's what's going on here. That's why there's mental chaos and that's why there's the Ten of Wands, the struggle and the burden, right? It's You're struggling with this situation right here and you have mental chaos going on with the ace of swords okay okay then we have the eight of cups okay eight of cups talks about you withdrawing right withdrawing with feelings of disappointment eight of cups is clarified by the moon card, right? Fear, anxiety, struggling with the subconscious mind because of the two of pentacles in reverse, because there's disorganization in your life. There's just disorganization because you have some kind of chaos, some kind of struggle with a third party situation or a third energy that's stopping the creation of something in your life, okay? Eight of Cups says that uh, you feel disappointed and you're withdrawing. The Moon card says you have a lot of fear and anxiety. And the Two of Pentacles in reverse says there's just disorganization in your thought processes, in your life, in your security. The Pentacles are about the physical, right? And there's just disorganization going on for you. The Six of Wands to the Fool card. Six of Wands to the Fool card, clarified by the Hermit as the bridge between. This is saying that you thought things were going just fine. Six of Wands is victory, success, confidence, right? Ego. You thought things were going just fine. And the Fool card, new beginning, new journey, emotional fulfillment. I mean, we're just doing good. But then the Hermit comes in and says, oh, it's almost like a kick in the gut, right? It's almost like a kick in the gut, this whole thing that's going on right here. And the hermit mode comes in and says, no, bro, that's not what's going on. Let me tell you what's really going on. And that's what this is about, right? This throws you into the hangman energy. This hangman energy is you pausing, right? <laughs> Processing, surrendering to what's going on around you. You pull in the high priestess, the high priestess and the hangman in the hermit energy, Gemini. The high priestess, the hangman, and the hermit together, all having a freaking party, right? I mean, this is some, this is some serious shit that you're going through right here. I mean, it truly is. 
right? You're doing some soul searching and some introspection. You are in a position of indecision. But the thing about this card is that you can't stay in this position of, the, of indecision for very long. Because, I mean, look at him. The blood's going to rush to your head and you're going to pass out and die. Okay? You can't stay there very long. This is not a position of, of indecision. <laughs> it's a position of momentarily not understanding what it is that the situation needs from you. Okay? To the high priestess, right? And I want to point out that both of these cards are the card of Pisces. Might mean something to you, might not. And then we have the star card coming up in reverse, but it's coming up and that is Pisces as well. So we have three Pisces cards here. No, I'm sorry. The fucking star card's Aquarius. What am I talking about? Aquarius. So we have double Pisces and Aquarius. So maybe that means something to you. Maybe it doesn't. And then this card right here, of course, is Virgo, right? So might mean something to you, might not. Makes no difference either way whatsoever, except that if it means something to you, you're going to be going, yeah, yeah, I'm dealing with a Virgo, right? And if, you, if it doesn't mean anything to you, disregard it completely. Anyway, you're doing some serious soul searching right here. You're reaching down into your subconscious mind and your intuition. You're sitting down with your higher power and you are saying, what do I do in this situation? What do I do? What do I do? Star card, Aquarius, <laughs> in reverse, talks about um, lack of faith, right? lack of faith in everything because with the fool and the six of wands you thought things were going great right you're like trucking right along going on your journey and doing the whole success thing and then all of a sudden the hermit comes in and says no no something is very very wrong in this situation to the star in reverse this is about sorry my nose itches when i read cards it's I'm channeling i think um now my nose is all red. The star in reverse is um, despair. A lack of faith and despair. Strength card in the center of your reading, right? In the center of your reading. That means this entire reading revolves around your ability to be strong. To pull on some inner strength. Pull on what you've learned in the high priestess energy, what you've discovered in the hermit energy, the decision that you finally make in the hangman energy, right? Right here. You have to be strong because you have to go through whatever is coming up in the rest of these cards. You're going to have to go through it. So source is telling you, be strong with the strength card in the center of your reading, okay? justice in reverse because there is a huge injustice happening right here gemini a huge injustice huge injustice you're getting fucked over hard in this in this reading you are and thank goodness that we do have something like this a tool like this because if this hasn't happened for you yet heads up something really messed up is coming your way Okay? If you're in the middle of it, maybe the rest of this reading will help you deal with it or figure it out. And if this has already happened to you, man, um, the ending cards are good, so um, you're in a good place. Okay, so justice in reverse. There is just a serious injustice because it's followed by the three of swords. Heartbreak, pain, sorrow, grief, rejection, separation, right? to the king of swords, which is the be all to end all. I mean, he is the final decision maker. There is some kind of, of severance, some kind of huge decision that um, hits you in the 10 of cups, hits you in harmony, happiness, values alignment, in the relationships in your life, in your life in general, in the fields of life, okay? So there's some kind of truth truth not just decision okay truth that is spoken about what you thought was the ten of cups is now turning into the ten of cups in reverse it's now turning into a broken home a broken marriage a misalignment of values truth is being spoken
Three of Wands says, at least you have some foresight now. Prepare. Because now you have some foresight as to what's coming down the road. What's coming down the road is an absolute ending in a love situation. That's what's coming down the road. If this hasn't happened for you yet and this is resonating with you, or maybe if it's not, maybe this is a complete blindsided surprise, which I think it is, up at the top because you think things are going along just fine. Well, word, Gemini, there is an absolute inevitable ending coming to a love situation in your life. And these cards are giving you foresight so you can prepare. Eight of Swords. Releasing. not just releasing, it's being open to new perspectives, okay? You're going to have to be open to new perspectives. You have no choice in the situation. You're going to have to be open to new perspectives. To the moon card, this is because of maybe a secret that's been revealed. Maybe this is you struggling with your subconscious mind. Hold on, let me figure this out real quick. Ten of Swords, Eight of Swords in reverse. This is releasing, being open to new perspectives, clarified by the moon card, because you have no choice, <laughs> right? Just like over here, you have no choice. You have to be open to new perspectives. And this moon card is saying that you're not seeing things clearly, right? It's foggy for you. Um, there's fear, there's anxiety. You're just don't know what you need to do. All you really know is that you have to get a new perspective on things. You have to get a new perspective. This moon card is clarified by the Eight of Swords in the Upright. Eight of Swords in the Upright. This is being in a state of mental imprisonment. But the thing about the Eights, as painful as it might be here, see, she's in this, in this energy of um panic right now okay she's in the energy of panic and if you've ever panicked sometimes shit doesn't work right right you 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 just can't do it and that's the energy of this card she's blindfolded and bound and imprisoned okay she's panicking she's having a panic attack and she doesn't know what to do but i'm going to tell you what eights are the number of 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 movement right? Movement and progress, decision-making. Eights are the number of, of action, change, rebirth, right? And that's what she's got to figure out because I'm going to tell you what, the sun's going to go down on her and the coyotes are going to come out. I mean, look at her. She's, she's, she's pretty far from civilization besides that big old house up there. And I mean, you know, she doesn't have much time to, to stay in a mentality of what do I do? What happened? What do I do? What do I do? Right? Um, so eight is painful as that may be for a moment. This is you working yourself out of this whole situation right here, right? It's you figuring out what the hell you're going to do, right? So you have to have, a, you got to come up with a new perspective. You have to. With the eight of swords in reverse, you have no choice. To the moon card, fear and anxiety. That's what she's feeling right there. Fear and anxiety. That's what she's feeling. Fear and anxiety, right? Struggling to the eight of swords. Got to figure out a way out. You got to figure out a way out. You got to figure out a way out. Because look, lo and behold, lo and behold, six of wands, just like up here. You thought things were going great. This is about victory, progress, success right? Ego to the nine of pentacles. This is about, this is about self-sufficiency, gratitude, right? I mean, just being good, right? But this is also about culmination. Nines are about bringing things to a conclusion, okay? Six is about communication and partnership. It's about, um, 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 cre 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 creation. It's about people coming together, right? So you, 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 you were thinking it was fine to the nine of pentacles. Everything's great. Everything's trucking right along, right? But look what comes in next. The three of swords. No, it's the same as up here. These three cards are saying the exact same thing that three, these three cards are saying. <clears throat> 
new journey, new beginning, victory, progress, and success. Hermit comes in and says, no. Over here, victory, progress, and success. Self-sufficiency, living the good life. And the Three of Swords comes in and says, no. Same message. Six different cards, same message. So what are you going to do, Jem? What are you going to do? You are going to manifest your own damn opportunities. You're going to figure yourself out. You're going to hustle and you're going to figure yourself out to the fool card. You are going on a new journey. You have no choice in the matter. You, you don't. You are taking a new journey and you must create a new beginning in your life. You must. You have no choice. It's, it's destiny. It is what is happening in your life. You have no choice. You are taking a new journey and you must create something for yourself with the Ace of Pentacles right there. The Two of Swords in reverse. This is, oh, sorry. This is um, coming out of the mental confusion, dealing with repressed emotions, coming out of being at a crossroads. It's, it's about making some progress, right? To the Empress. Because you got to figure out what you're going to do. You got to figure out what you're going to do because you have to maintain life, right? And you're going to figure out what you have to do with this Empress and you're going to be successful. I mean, for God's sakes, we have the Fool, brand new beginning, a brand new journey, the Ace of Pentacles, right? Manifesting brand new opportunities, maybe even financial opportunities to the Two of Swords in reverse, letting all that shit go, clearing your head, right? to the empress, creating abundance in your life, taking control, being the empress, handling all of this shit like a boss, right? Rolling with the punches. And then we have the sun card, happiness, vitality, and success. So what happens from all of this is you come out on top. You learn something huge in all of this. Huge. You learn something huge. What is this, Gemini? What is this? What is this? What is this thing right here? What is this three? What's this three of cups right here? What's this three of cups right here? Spirit, what is this big thing right here that is heartbreaking, that is, is, is completely and totally... The Nine of Cups. What is this thing here? To the Ten of Swords in reverse, to the Ten of Pentacles. Oh. Oh. Hold on. To the Two of Swords. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, saying the same thing, right? So the Nine of Cups is saying wishes fulfilled come for happiness and satisfaction which is exactly what you thought was going on and then the ten of swords comes in and it says no crisis crisis to the ten of pentacles in your family in the establishment and structure of your life maybe in your bank account right to the two of swords lots of confusion indecision right to the judgment card um having to make some kind of very serious decision to the Queen of Pentacles about your home or about somebody that holds a significant place in your life. I should take this over to Vimeo, honestly, but I'm too lazy. I just don't feel like it. Vimeo is pretty cool. I, I, I posted some... Uh, some videos on Vimeo. I posted something for Taurus on Vimeo and I posted something for Scorpio on Vimeo. And then I got to screwing around on Vimeo because, you know, I've never done it before. And it was, um, it's really cool. It's kind of like a YouTube alternative um, just for like watching videos and stuff. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Um, so some kind of huge decision about either a significant person in your life or your home, right? 
Five of Swords in reverse comes in and says that you have to be open to change because the Chariot says that you have to take action to the Five of Cups. This is about escapism. It's about disappointment and abandonment and escapism. Okay, and that's all of those apply for you right here. All of those apply. So, you know, things are going to work out just fine for you, Gemini. They really are. You just, um, you're just a little disorganized right now. Just a little disorganized. Knight of Pentacles, a little stuck, right? To the Ace of Cups in reverse. Little, um, little emotional, but there's just like a complete and total just block in your life right here. It just like stops. Yeah, look. Breaking free of the mental challenges that we just talked about this whole reading. Being able to celebrate. Hold up. Celebrate or reunite to the Eight of Wands, some incoming communication. Hold on, the plot thickens. The plot thickens. King of Swords, somebody speaks their truth. Ooh, gem. I should have took this over to Vimeo. This would have been a good one. I could have did a whole 30 to 45 minutes on it, but I can't now because if the videos are too long, nobody wants to watch them, which I don't blame them, I'm the same way right? Ooh, the, the two of cups. Okay. The two of cups in reverse. Hold on. I'm going to tell you this whole story in just a second. Hold on. Two of cups in, in reverse to the seven of wands. To the three of swords. To the three of swords to the Nine of Pentacles and the Ten of Wands. Nine of Pentacles, Ten of Wands. Okay, burden and struggle. All right, so Spirit, what's the, uh, what's the culmination here? What's the culmination? What, 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 what is, what's the end result here? Well, let me just read you what I have, and then I'm going to clarify with another deck, okay? You can tell when your cards start to get tired, right? They're like, oh, I'm tired of talking. Okay. So, so check this out, Gemini. This is what goes on. This is what goes on. This is what goes on. Reunion. Communication. Truth. About a breakup. It's a challenge for you. Because of the broken heart that you have right now, because of this whole reading, culmination to the situation And it's a burden and a struggle, but it's an, it's been a burden and a struggle, but it's an accomplishment. So these cards say that something, either you send communication about reuniting, not necessarily reconciling. Okay. It's about reuniting. It's three people coming together and talking things over. Okay. Reuniting. To the Eight of Wands, this is communication, action, an energetic shift somehow. King of Swords, the truth is spoken about the misalignment of values that resulted in a breakup. The Seven of Wands says that there's a challenge to the Three of Swords because there was heartbreak. The Nine of Pentacles says that, I need to clarify this. Nine of Pentacles says that there is a culmination to the situation. And then we have the Ten of Wands. What is the what is the difference between the two of these spirit? What is what's the split? What's the difference between the two of these? To the Emperor. Okay. Okay. So this Emperor is representing whoever this other person is in this reading, or whoever this situation is in this reading, right? It doesn't have to be a person. So the Emperor is representing and the Ten of Wands. So yeah, there's communication that that it, that happens, and there's talk of reuniting, right? But the Nine of Pentacles says that you're feeling just pretty good about the culmination that happened here, and you're not real sure 
about wanting to go back, right? And then the Ten of Wands comes in and says it's a burden and a struggle for you. Because you kind of, you kind of, I mean, it's fresh, right? It's fresh. So I'm going to use the Thoth deck for a second. And this is a new deck for me. I'm kind of learning it. If you don't know anything about it, it's um, got a lot of occult connections and background. And it was created by Aleister Crowley and blah, 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 blah. But I like the deck because it talks about tarot in almost like a root way, almost like almost like a wolf is wild and a dog is domesticated. And it's almost like the tarot that we're all used to is the domesticated tarot, but this is like the root. It's go do history on it. And no, I don't agree with all of the whole Aleister Crowley thing, but I do think that um, a lot of people don't understand um, where he was coming from and people are afraid of the things that I do and the things that we do as people who, I mean, let's face it, tarot is part of the occult. It, it just is. I mean, there's no two ways about it. And people get freaked out about that. So anyway, that's the pitch. Okay. Okay. So all that to say that I have to look at my list in order to interpret this because I'm getting new to these cards, but we're going to do an outcome. So outcome is... Um, trump card called art which is about temperance it's the art of tempering yourself to the eight of wands which is swiftness in this deck swiftness so tempering yourself swiftness not to move too quickly the magician manifest it hold on jim The Magician to the Six of Swords. See, I got to look. Six of Swords. The state of knowing. Knowledge as distinguished from ignorance or misunderstanding. The state of knowing. Okay. So the Magician. Okay. So you're manifesting. Okay. 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 So art is temperance, right? Temper any swiftness that you want, that you feel urged, right? Temper any any swift action, okay? The magician says to manifest, manifest um, knowing, manifest knowledge right now and make sure that you don't act out of rashness. To futility, this is um, the seven of swords in this deck. This is about a useless act or gesture, right? So what these cards are in the Knight of Wands. So what these cards are saying is that you should temper yourself. Temper any action that you feel like you need to take. Manifest logic, reasoning, and knowledge. So your efforts won't be futile. Take inspired action. When you take inspired action. So your efforts won't be futile when you take inspired action. So this inspired action that's going on here, what are you going to do about this, Jim? And indolence, the six, uh, the eight of cups. This talks about, again, the card of Pisces, I want to mention. Avoidance of activity or exertion, lady. Okay, yeah. So, so you don't, don't take, so when you take passionate action, it's not, um, in vain. Okay? It's not in vain. When you take passionate action, it's not in vain. So temper yourself, temper your uh, um, desire to want to move in this situation. Have some understanding, some knowledge, some wisdom, so your actions aren't in vain. 
the hermit is urging you to do some soul searching and some introspection. To the prince of discs, this would be the prince of coins, the prince of pentacles. Look into the future. To the queen of wands. To the queen of wands. Before you look into the future and temper your passions, right? To um, the seven of cups. The seven of cups in this deck is called debauchery. And let's see, the Seven of Cups is about um, lead astray, lead away from virtue or excellence, right? So what these cards are saying is that you need to go into the hermit energy and think about your future before you take any passionate action or make any passionate decisions because, um, because, lead away from virtue or excellence. Because it might not be in your best interest. It might not be in your best interest. The Prince of Swords, Fortune, and the Prince of Cups. Okay, this Prince of Swords is somebody who is insincere. Okay, he's an insincere kind of guy. He does... He takes the action that he takes because he doesn't know what else to do, right? I mean, think about it. It's a knight on a big white horse rushing in. I mean, we've all seen those movies, right? Merlin and all that kind of stuff. We've all seen those movies. And um, the tarot cards are very much like those movies, by the way. Lord of the Rings-ish, big time. So anyway, um, this guy rushes in and he does his job. He either delivers messages or barks orders or comes in and cuts everything up and leads battle into rape and pillage, you know? Um, that's the energy of this guy, right? So, so what this card is saying is to not have that kind of energy, to think very carefully about moving into anything like this because there is debauchery. You have to debauchery, debauchery, debauchery. And you have to think about your future, right? Again, the seven of cups in this deck is about um, to lead away from virtue or excellence, which is, says it's not in your best interest, right? Think about it because it might not be in your best interest. Don't take action like the Prince of Swords, right? The two, the, um, uh, the, the wheel comes in and says that whatever decision you make here about reuniting with this person um, is going to be a turning point in your destiny one way or another. But I'm here to tell you, if you step off a curb and get hit by a bus, that's a turning point in your destiny too, okay? It's not always a, oh, good turning point in your destiny. Sometimes shit happens that is not a good turning point in your destiny. But either way, it's a turning point in your destiny. So remember that when you're listening to these general tarot card readings, okay? All right. The Prince of Cups, right? Be in touch with your emotions and think twice about offering them to this person. Death comes in and says it's in your best interest to put an end to this whole situation. And the Queen of Swords comes in and reiterates what I, reiterates what I just said. It is in your best interest. The Queen of Swords looks out for her best interests, right? And if you are not in her best interest, whack, you get that sword, right? To this, um, the death card, it's, it's uh, spirits telling you. What's in your best interest? That's how things work out. Now, can I tell you what, what you choose? No. Can I tell you what uh, is down the road for you in your future? No. Why? Because nobody knows what you're going to do. It's That's where the free will thing comes in, right? Nobody knows what you're going to do. Not even spirit and source. They're all standing around looking at their watch, tapping their toes, going, what is Gemini going to do here so we can execute into the future, right? 
because they're not going to interfere in your life. If you choose one way, then they're going to try to guide you the way that you need to go based on the decisions that you make, hoping to be able to steer you in the right direction. And if you choose this side, they're like, okay, and they just do what they're supposed to be doing. Nobody can tell you how this is going to turn out, right? All right, but it does turn out good because look, new beginning and a new journey, right? Manifestation of a brand new opportunity, financial or otherwise, to the two of swords, releasing all the mental, right? To the empress, creating abundance, being the empress, handling the situation like a boss and happiness. So whatever decision that's interesting, that there's a gap there, right? So they tell you what's in your best interest. And then there's a gap and then there is the outcome. Woo, what a cliffhanger that is, huh? Seriously. So that's funny because they tell you what's in your best interest and then there's this big, huge gap and then there's the outcome. So either way, nobody knows what decision you're going to make, Gemini, that's going to bring you this outcome. Interesting. But Spirit did tell you what's in your best interest right? So maybe what's in your best interest should point you to this outcome without telling you what to do or telling you what happens when you do it, except that it's a good outcome. Interesting. Super interesting. Well, there you go, Gemini. That has been your reading. I am going to go um, unload my groceries and get all of my stuff together for my trip. And I hope that you guys have an amazing Labor Day weekend. Namaste.